Very cool. Welcome to What's New Worship. I'm Pastor Andy, and you can tell we need a bigger space. Amen? So we're glad that you're here today for our Teen Challenge Day. This is a day where we're going to offer hope, and not just hope because he's definitely that, but he offers freedom as well, and he's going to do that. I, I believe he's going to do that. Some of you have walked in maybe skeptical, but you're going to walk out here brand new. I believe that. So we're glad that you're here. Again, I'm Pastor Andy. Uh, I'm not speaking today. The Holy Spirit's going to take that job, and he's going to do that through uh, these guys, so we can't wait for that. There's plenty of visitors, so if you are a member or you've been here frequently, uh, you need to get around and make sure you meet the new folks. Uh, there are name tags out there. Some of you I've seen, like Elvis is in the building, I believe, so let's try to put your <laughs> real name on there so we're not calling you those type of things, although I did see a child of the one true king, and that was pretty cool, but that's still not your uh, name that we can call you by. I'm, I guess we can, but you know what I'm saying. Uh, but we're excited. Uh, God is definitely moving in our church, and uh, we're trying to love God and love people. That's the plan. So uh, we're glad that you're here. Uh, we can't wait to see what God does because he's a good, good God. And, amen. So let's pray, and then I'm going to turn this over to the worship team. Let's pray. Uh, Heavenly Father, first, can, can we just say that we love you? Um, it, it, it should blow our minds every time we think about the love that you give us. So God, I thank you so much for what you did for me, why, how you sent Jesus Christ to die on the cross for my sin. God, I don't know why you would have done that other than that this, it's just this great love. So God, thank you for being that for us. God, we pray for today's service. We pray right now as we get into to these songs that they're not just songs, God, that they are love letters spoken to you. God, that we would offer you what you are worthy of, God. I pray that you'd put us in that mind frame, that we would give you what you deserve, and then, Lord, for the, the fellowship time that we would get around and meet needs, God, there's no doubt there's hurting people here. God, I pray that we would pray for people, that we would meet people, that we would uh, fellowship and just uh, get to know each other and love people. And then, Lord, for your word that will be spoken through testimony and in, in Scripture, God, I pray that it will absolutely, radically, supernaturally transform our lives. You are an awesome, awesome God. We love you, we praise you, and we thank you. In your precious name we pray, so be it. All right, are you guys ready for, man, that was loud. Uh, we're very excited about this today. We're glad uh, that you're here for this. Uh, it's about to go down. You're about to hear freedom, hope, grace, forgiveness, all those things. And I want to turn the program over to Mr. Jeff King. Give him a hand. Good morning. Good morning. Another praise break for Jesus. Come on, put your hands together for Jesus this morning. <laughs> 58 years ago, in 1958, it's kind of funny how those two numbers kind of match. Everybody, I, you know what, we're going to go a different direction already. I want everybody in this congregation who has been, who is an alcoholic, is a drug addict, or know someone has been affected by it, to please raise your hands. Look around. I want everybody to look around at the hands raised. Keep them up. Take a look. You can put them down. What does that say? That says that we need to talk about it. It says that we're not, to be, not supposed to shove it under the rug because unfortunately when we do that, we can't see it. And we need to see it in order to fix it. And back in 1958, David Wilkerson, is everybody familiar with Teen Challenge? Who has not ever heard of Teen Challenge ever? Raise your hand. That's the kind of numbers I like to see. <laughs> so maybe I'm speaking to you. Maybe this choir is singing to you today. But Teen Challenge is the largest, most comprehensive, faith-based residential recovery program of its kind in the country. We help and endeavor to help people, men and women and adolescents, become emotionally balanced, mentally sound, socially adjusted, physically well, but the most important thing is to become spiritually alive. And we're only going to do that through believing in his son and confessing with our mouth, and you will be saved, is what Paul wrote. So back in 1958, there was a preacher, a little... 
His name is David Wilkerson, and he was in Phillipsburg, Pennsylvania, a little country preacher from 1954 to 1958. And then this year, something was stirring in his heart and in his wife's heart. And apparently in 1958, if you owned a television, you were a big deal, and he was watching a lot of television. I'm sure a couple of us could identify with that. He was watching a lot of television, and he had this thought one day as he was watching a late show, and he said, I wonder if I'm watching too much television. I'm wondering if I need to be in prayer more. So he put a fleece before the Lord and said, okay, Lord, if you want me to be in prayer more, absolutely. If you want me to be in prayer more, let me sell my television within the first hour that I put an ad in the newspaper. One hour is what he asked for. So he put the ad in the newspaper, probably almost thinking, Lord, I hope it doesn't sell. I hope it doesn't sell. <laughs> Guess what happened? In the 29th minute, somebody called for that television. They asked, how much is your television? He said, $100. He didn't even put a price. He had no idea. I don't think he thought it was really going to sell. And then the person was over 15 minutes. So within the hour, he made that agreement with the Lord. He entered into, and his daughter, Bonnie, and I hope I get the quote right, said that David Wilkerson, my father, is not recognized for who he was as a man, but because he took the time to be in prayer and to listen when God wanted to speak to him. When God counted it important enough to speak to him. He dared to listen, is what she said. He dared to listen when God saw fit to take time and speak with him. And I'm probably thinking that we could all do that a little bit more. So the beginning, a couple weeks later, he noticed on a Life magazine he was reading that on the cover was a picture or a caricature of seven defendants. They were teenagers on trial for beating and murdering uh, a 14 or 15-year-old polio victim to death. Now, to him, he was revolted by this, but for some reason, the Holy Spirit, when, it's, when I read it in paper, it says he had this thought. He had this thought because the Holy Spirit had put that on him to have that thought. That was the Holy Spirit's desire for him to go to Manhattan and find out well, how he could help these young boys. Well, he didn't necessarily help them because he went into the courtroom, and I go into a lot of courtrooms. I'm the program manager. I, I'm the court liaison, and I go into a lot of courtrooms, and I just can't go and talk to the defendants with a Bible and say, Your Honor, I need to talk to these guys. No. I would have been thrown out when that's exactly what happened to David Wilkerson is that he was cast out of that courtroom. But what happened was there's a famous picture of him holding a black Bible up, black and white shot in a newspaper, as being this outcast of the courtroom. Well, what happened was now he went out into the streets to minister to the gangs and to the mainline heroin addicts that were out there because that's what he realized, that these guys weren't criminals per se. It was a direct result of them being mainline heroin addicts. How many in here knows a heroin addict? So all of that to say this. He recognized that there was a problem much deeper than just sin. Of course, that's the biggest problem of all. But a part of that sin was addiction and making poor choices and our bodies being physically addicted to something, whether it's alcohol or, or drugs. So the first teen challenge was birthed by the Holy Spirit 58 years ago in 1958. Now we're going to fast forward 58 years. Today, Teen Challenge is about in a neighborhood of 300 nationally. There is something called Global Teen Challenge in which we are in 94, at least 94 different countries with the same hope, with the same word that the only cure for alcoholism or drug addiction or any sin is believing in Christ and what his sacrifice atoned on the cross. There's no other way. We can go clinical or we can go spiritual and we're on the spiritual side. So Fast forward even more. Well, actually, we can't go past tomorrow. So I really meant 15 years ago because 15 years ago was birthed 
out of John Franich and Novella Franich, Pastor John, Shenandoah Valley Teen Challenge. And that is who is here today in the yellow and black shirts. <laughs> Shenandoah Valley Teen Challenge. In 1958, Brooklyn Teen Challenge was the very first one. And we have Shenandoah Valley Teen Challenge. And let me say, I did admissions for a while. We have the most unique teen challenge you're going to find. I promise you that right now, okay? The most unique. I've been affiliated with 17 challenges across this country, and there is nothing like this one. And here's the reason. It's broken up into three different phases. You have the induction phase, the vocational phase, the transition phase. One of the areas in where a lot of teen challenges and a lot of programs make their mis biggest mistake is transition out of the program. I have somebody here who's a graduate who was earning money and saving thousands of dollars while he was in the program. We just had graduation yesterday, and aside from the child support, we have people in our program who pay child support because they're working. They're saving money. We're the only one in the country that positions our students to literally be employed, save money, pay their portion of the tuition because we're a tuition-based ministry. And we set up what we call the six components of transition. We need to transition them out. Must have a job, must have a place to live, communication, transportation, a home church. Is there any, are there any graduates to Teen Challenge here? Whew. Two, three, four, five, six. Oh, seven. I forgot. Stephen? The bottom line is this. This program is working under a, an umbrella of Teen Challenge, but has a very unique culture and dynamic to this place on top of a mountain. This men's program would be a lot different in their culture if they were in North Philadelphia in the middle of the hood where the crack house is one block away. But we're not. We're on top of a mountain where the worst thing they have to do is chop wood if they want to be warm. Oh, they know. That's, they know. Come on. Come on. We are grateful to be here today. We are grateful to be uh, not just allowed to be here by, by the pastor, but to be in a position to help others see. I promise you, I promise you, there is an addict in this building right now. In one of these seats is a drug addict and or an alcoholic and or maybe more than one. And we are here to tell you, peace be with you, because Jesus, if you would just allow him to change your heart, that's the only message. I think what we say is in Teen Challenge that, that hope lives here, changed lives leave here. Take a praise break right now. Give God some glory. He got $100 for the TV, by the way. Actually, the documentation never sells, says whether or not he actually gave him money for it. Anyway, again, I just want to thank you, Pastor Andy, for your interaction with Teen Challenge and the leadership here and the, and the movement that we're, we're pushing into now. Um, one of the ways that people uh, hear about Teen Challenge is storefront fundraising. When you see a yellow shirt or a black shirt or somebody representing Teen Challenge in front of one of the stores that you go to, whether it's a Kroger or where else do we go? Walmarts and Giants and small 7-Elevens. We, we have a, Mr. Trevino in the back there is helping us in our uh, fundraising efforts. So when, when, when you see, it's not just about the money, although, yes, we like your donations, but it's about prayer. And that's from the very beginning what happened with Teen Challenge with, with Reverend Wilkerson is that he was called into prayer into a more intimate relationship with the Lord. And then the second way that people find out about us is through our choir outings. That's why we're here today. So I'm going to invite the choir in the yellow and black shirts to come on up in whatever order Stefan told you to come up. And right now we're going to hear 
I'm not sure if I'm forgetting anything, but Pastor Justin, our executive director, will come up after the choir and testimony and bring a word and, and bring some more information about, um, about this very unique program, Shenandoah Valley Teen Challenge. Right now, these men are in the induction phase, which means that they are in the first phase within the first five months of the program. I did want to tell you, though, that this program is a 14-month residential program, 14 months, with a mandatory last two months is transition. So we want to really, really emphasize the transition out of the program so that because we can't live in the umbrella, under the umbrella of Teen Challenge forever, we, we have to go out into the world and make our mark for the Holy Spirit. So uh, Stephen Cole is our choir director and master musician. And uh, I just want to say again, thank you for allowing us to come into your home. And I hope you enjoy the choir. Oh, thank you so much. <clears throat> First song we're going to do this morning is called I'm a Friend of God. And uh, we were enemies of him at one time, but now we can honestly scream out, cry out, and sing out that I am a friend of God today. Amen. And be in mind, some of these guys never sang before in their life. <laughs> <laughs>
never seen it in a choir before, man. Wow. Come on. Wow. Where's Keaton? Right here. All right. Say something good about the Lord, man. Well, first of all, I just want to say, oop, let me punch it. I'm pretty loud, so I don't have to use this, but. Well, first of all, I just want to say God is amazing, and I love him so much. Oh. God, I love him. Well, I'm from Winchester right here in Virginia, um, Frederick County, Jamesville High School graduate, so um, some of the faces are familiar. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I, don't, I don't really plan on speaking because it all, like, like a teacher always told me in Teen Challenge, it comes from the heart. You just come out there and tell from the heart. So here I go. Um, I came into the program a year ago, March, or two years ago now, or whatever, March 2014, on March 14th. My mom introduced me to Teen Challenge after being incarcerated for so many years. I was so lost and so down that all I wanted to do is just keep going with my, 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 my bad past, my inner past. So I just kept going and going, and she finally brought along Teen Challenge. Um, I, was, I grew up in the church all my, growing up all my life. And uh, so I came to Teen Challenge. I did the whole year. Um, and it was great. God just touched me. God grabbed a hold of me. And I was like, all right, well, maybe I can become in the leadership and do it. And I was, it was on my heart to do it. I was going to do it. And then my last couple months, I just, I don't know what it was. Something just, was just maybe, maybe you should do this. Or maybe, maybe what about doing this? You know, I just got confused. And I had to help. I just, I didn't know what to do. I couldn't, I, I just got lost. So I ended up leaving the program after graduation, moved to New Market, and um, before I just, I just, I got a loan. I didn't have a license. I started working on the farm every day, so I just got a loan and I got lost. And then, what do you know? Well, I just found the wrong person at the wrong time. Um, I got right back into my addiction. I just, God was there. I, I believed in God. I just, I didn't open up I, when I could have had. I have many pastors come to me. Hey, take me. I'll, I'll, I'll take you to church. Oh yeah, I'll be there. I'll be there. Never called him just wanted to do work and that was it and uh, my mom would always call me hey how are you doing I'm doing great and I would lie to her you know why, why, why do I have to lie to someone so great why do I have to lie to someone who's who my parents have helped me so much and um, where I'm getting at is I don't really want to reflect on the bad stuff that happened I want to reflect on what God's doing in my life now and <laughs> And so what happened was I ended up getting incarcerated, and then as soon as I got incarcerated, I was like, here I go again. So I picked up my word while I was in the jail, the county jail here in Winchester, and I was like, you know what, this is it. But I had dug myself into a hole to the point where I might not be able to get out this time. I, was in th I graduated in March. I was locked up twice after that. And I was like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get out of this. So I just keep praying. I was like, Lord. I give it all to you. Just tell me what you want to do. Put in my life what you want me to do. And my mom, I called my mom one day, and I was like, Mom, I know it might not be what happened, but I want to go back to Teen Challenge. I want to do restoration, and if it, where the Lord puts on my heart to become an intern and do that, that's what I want to do. But right now, I'm going to just take one step at a time. And I just kept praying and praying and praying. And finally, I came to court, and God blessed me. He gave me an unsecured bond. He, here I go to Teen Challenge, and I'm right back. So... Where I'm at right now, I just want to thank God for everything He's done in my life. And without Him, I wouldn't be here. And like the verse I stand on is Philippians 4:13. I can do all things through Christ. Because with Him, we can do it all. All. So that's that's my Wow. Wow. Is it good to be back in my hometown and give him back? I'm also from Winchester. And um I'm here just to, you know, give back, you know. I just, you know, I'm thankful for God being in my life, you know, because I was incarcerated as well. And what all led up to that was, you know, me being in my mess, not thinking straight, not doing what I'm supposed to. And I just remember every time I'm praying to God, praying to God. I didn't have a relationship with him first. So I would just pray. I said, God, save me. Get me out of this. And he would. But I would never fully commit myself to him. So finally, it was, I think, in September. Well, two months, it was in, I got uh, incarcerated in July. And I called my mom. And I was like, Mom, can you please you know, help me do something? Let me get into a program. The lawyer told me that they had a six-month program for me. And 
My mom didn't want that. She called. She got a hold of Teen Challenge. She heard about it on uh, uh, K Love, and she got me here. And I just, since I've been here, you know, I prayed to be baptized, and I just wanted to be the right time. And actually, yesterday was the right time for me. I got baptized. <laughs> Um, how good is our God? He's, he's awesome. Because I remember, you know, he's led me here today. The last time I was incarcerated for my birthday, and I, I got to see my mom through that window. And um, this January 1st was her birthday, and I was allowed out to see her, and I got to see her, and he's just saved me. And I love Jesus, and I thank you guys for letting me speak. He's done a lot in my life, and I hope he does a lot in yours, because if he can take me and to give back to my community, he can use any of y'all. <laughs> Squeeze me. <laughs> um, the other night we had a talent show down at... Uh, uh, Harrisonburg, I believe it is. I'm not I'm too familiar with the areas around here, but um, we, Harrisonburg, is that what it's called? We got together, and I, I told the guys, I said, you know, the ladies always seem to do something, always outdo the guys. And uh, <coughs> and so I said, come on, you guys, we got to do something. They're all, no, 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 I don't want to do anything. I said, come on, man, I'll work with you. I'll be there with you. I'll, I'll stand up for you guys. We'll work together, amen? amen? So we come up with this little song right here, and we want to do that for you today. We want to let you guys know this is only like the third time we've done it, so... Uh, <laughs> just kind of enjoy it with us. We love the Lord. His love endures forever. Amen. Amen. Okay. You ready? Uh, yeah, can you move this stuff over Yes, here? I can. And we'll put it back in a, in a minute. All right, here we go. All right, pray for us. Amen. <laughs> go ahead there, youngin. <clears throat> Sing it with us. 
more minutes in, in a moment, but before we go any further in the service, I just wanted to take a moment before the choir finishes up to talk about our sponsor student program. Um, I forgot this first four down here. Oh, man, I'm not going to see it. Which one, right? Oh, there we go. <laughs> I'm always nervous about these things because I'm afraid I'm going to turn them on when I'm going to the bathroom. Um, <laughs> right? That would be awkward for everybody. Uh, so <laughs> I, I promised Pastor Andy earlier I wouldn't say anything about the game that's happening at 4.45 p.m. Um, so I'm going to stick to my promise and not say anything, but... Listen, okay, I can't do it. My first Facebook status update of the day was, man, I get to preach and watch Redskins football in January. It, on one day, it don't get much better than that, huh? I grew up in a household, a divided house. <laughs> wow. I don't know if that's because I'm not getting invited back or because he's that confident in the Cowboys. I grew up in a divided household. My father's a Cowboys fan. So, and he's from Jersey. That doesn't make any sense at all. But um, listen, we have a, a sponsor student program, and I just want to share about this for a moment. Jeff mentioned that we are a tuition-based program. And when he says that, we do ask families of the loved ones that come into our program for support. But we don't ask for 100% support. So we ask families to sponsor. There's an intake fee and $350 a month ongoing support that we ask out of the family. Now, that's extremely reasonable because if you've ever tried to get into a 30-day clinical program, you're talking tens of thousands of dollars. Teen Challenges has been so fortunate to have amazing donors and supporters that our costs are nowhere near that. Our hard cost as a ministry, it costs us about $1,500 a month per student. We have to raise a budget of about $60,000 every single month. And, you know, that, that's a crazy number, but God is so faithful in regards to making that happen because we have 45 students in the program and we take care of these students 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We have awesome facilities and to see all that come together for $60,000 a month is, is phenomenal. I get, I get to do the fun part of getting up here and talking about money and all the nuts and bolts and all that good stuff. When we do offering at chapel on Monday night, I'm terrible at it. I just want to be honest. I, hey, pass the baskets. If you want to give, give. If you don't, whatever. You know, God is good. <laughs> I say that because, I, you know, I just get up here and just share the facts and say, you know, we want to give you an opportunity. And if you want to partner with Teen Challenge, we are so grateful and so thankful for doing that. And one tangible way you can do that is sponsor a student. It's a monthly commitment. It's a way that you can get involved on an ongoing basis. And uh, we have brochures. Chris Trevino, where are you? He's in the back. He's going to be at the choir table with the bright yellow shirt on, just like that. And so if you're interested in getting involved and sponsor a student, we recently just retooled this program because um, there's a lot of other monthly sponsorship programs out there, kind of like um, we, we do a, a support for Food for the Hungry, my wife and I. We have a little girl. Her name is, her name is Sophia. She's from Cambodia, right? And we support her on a monthly basis. And, and we have one person that we support with Food for the Hungry, Teen Challenge isn't really like that. This is a way for us to offset the cost of the program for all the students that, are, that we're going to serve and we're going to minister to. And so how we're going to connect you with what we're doing is through, um, we have an email system where we send out monthly testimonies 
And um, I'm really excited about our, our, our development team and our marketing team and how we've retooled this this year, starting in January. Um, we're going to be sending out testimonies of students the month before they graduate and sending it out to those who sponsor the student. One of the cool things we're doing in 2016 is giving you an opportunity to speak some encouragement into those students. So for people who sponsor a student, each month you'll get a testimony. In the testimony, there'll be a button where you can click it and you can shoot us a note back. Your favorite scripture, some words of prayer, some words of encouragement. And what we're going to do, what we're hoping to do is bundle up all those notes and then on graduation day, put 30 to 45 notes from donors into the hands of our students. The first month is the hardest, right? When you're coming out of recovery, you don't have this community around you anymore. And so we can't be there. How cool would it be if our donors could be there for them, huh? And so that's an awesome way for you guys to get plugged in and support. And again, that's something we just changed this year. And so here's the, here's the brochure. It's on the table out there. Uh, if you're interested in getting involved in that manner, um, we'd sure appreciate it. I'll be back in a few minutes. We've got one more song. Can we just go ahead and do the last song? And then um, I'll be back to close this out. Okay. Thank you, Stefan.
that. I gotta hit the button again. Check one, two. I'm on. Awesome. Hey, thank you guys so much, um, Pastor Andy and Christine. Thank you again for having us out. I, I, I just want to say I love following you guys on Facebook <laughs> over Christmas, Buddy the Elf, and everything else. <laughs> Man, you guys are phenomenal, and your love for Jesus, your love for people, your love for the community, it is awesome, and it's evidence here. So. I know my, my, my dad sat with you a couple weeks ago, and you guys got to talk about the non-residential program, and I think, I think he asked the question, what, what denomination are you part of? And I think your response was awesome. Man, we just love Jesus, right? And there's no, no, uh, no, no denomination, I mean, not, none of that. We're not worried about all that, right? It's just Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. That's all that matters. He has the power to really change a life. Um, I'm grateful to be here. Let me get my, my sermon notes up. It's going, there we go. Awesome. Um, yeah, it's been an awesome 2016 so far. We're, we're right into the beginning of the year. Uh, we celebrated Family Weekend over the last weekend, and that's one of my favorite weekends of the, mo- weekends of the month. We invite all the families and the students to come out. Uh, yesterday, I believe we baptized 13 people uh, yesterday afternoon. Yeah, it was an awesome time. We had, we had three, two guys and one lady finish the entire program uh, they graduated, one of the ladies stayed on an intern, and both of the guys were moving on. And then I think it was four students went from first to second phase, um, and we had an awesome time. I mean, the church that we were attended, it was, it was packed out. There was probably 150 to 175 people there, uh, all families. As I, I, my numbers might be wrong, but just coming together and worshiping Jesus and seeing relationships uh, begin to get restored. Um, and that, that's the reality of it. As Jeff mentioned earlier, everybody in this room has been affected by drugs or alcohol, whether you're dealing with an addiction yourself, whether you've, you've been in communication with someone who's got an addiction. Um, it's hard pressed to look somewhere today and see where a life hasn't been affected by drugs and alcohol. And so part of our heart is to provide as much support as we can to the family. Um, you know, we can't there's only so much we can do being limited by time and by space, right? Everybody has so much busy, busy schedules. And so we just tried to open our campus up once a month, and we have an admissions coordinator that spends time talking to families prior to entry and trying to provide as much support as we can to the families as well. Um, we, we, uh, and so we, that's one of the things that we're really passionate about. Um, 2016, you know, God's been kind of giving me a theme for this year. And I, I preached the sermon that I'm preaching now a couple months ago at my home church on a Sunday evening. And when I preached it, I didn't really realize that it was the direction God was going to be taking me for the entire year. Um, and I'm going to kind of do a flyby this morning over this message. But I, I believe strongly in the power of storytelling. And, and I want to... I want to pause there for a second because I, I believe as followers of Christ that we have the absolute best stories to tell. I think the church gets such a bad rap, and I, and I say church, I mean church as a whole, right? Everybody who is a follower of Christ, because we're so often known for what we're against and our laws and our precepts and all of that. And, and don't get me wrong, I, I work in a program where we have to provide accountability, we have to provide rules, and we have to provide structure and, and all of that. So I realize the power in, 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 in that. But I think so often we approach unbelievers with that mindset, and I think we lose people before they even get in the door. 2016, God has really hit me. He said, you know what, Justin, I just want you this year to just tell my stories. We have a book, 66 books. It's called The Bible, and it's a storybook. It's the most phenomenal nonfiction storybook you could ever read. Notice the emphasis on nonfiction. It happened. It's truth. We have the best stories to tell. You got to hear a few stories this morning. I wish we'd had time to have every student share their testimony every time we go out because you would have heard some of the same phenomenal stories, stories of transformation, stories of hope. 
These are the stories that we all have to tell. My question for you this morning is, if you look inward, what story do you have to tell? Maybe it's one of transformation from drug and alcohol addiction. Maybe it's an amazing testimony of favor, and you've never touched a drug your entire life. Oh, yeah, those stories are hugely important. I've been blessed to marry a Bible school graduate. My wife, she knows it's funny, she works for Teen Challenge now, but when we, were, we had this group text with our staff members, and she's so innocent to drugs and alcohol, she had no clue what Mary Jane meant. Like, they were saying, the, you know, throwing that reference across group text, and she, like, secretly came and asked me. She said, who's Mary Jane? <laughs> and, yeah, that's, that's awesome, right? And so she's got that testimony of God's protection over her life. And not living, making the foolish choices that I made. I was a mess. But I believe as a church we have the best stories to tell. I want to take just a few minutes this morning and tell you one story in the Bible that absolutely blows my mind every time I hear it. There was a woman, we don't know her name. The story is told in the Gospels. And all she's known by is that she was the woman with the issue of blood. Now could you imagine your story being told and never having a name attributed your name attributed to your story. All your story was ever told was it was about your issue. And they tell her story in the Bible. They called it an issue of blood. The other scripture actually says that she had this hemorrhaging problem. But all of the tellings of this story include the fact that she had spent every penny trying to see different doctors, and yet no one could help her. She was caught up in this issue. It was a medical issue, but she couldn't get free. The thing that amazes me about this is not necessarily her story of transformation because it's phenomenal, but how her story of transformation actually happened. Because as we go deeper into her story, we actually, we can assume from reading the text that she had heard stories about Jesus. How else would she know to leave her house and go chase down some man. I mean, 12 years, all the best doctors tried to reach into her life and save her. All of her money she had spent. But yet, somebody had to have told a story powerful enough to cause her one morning to get up out of her house and go chase down this man named Jesus. She hears that Jesus is coming to a nearby town. I imagine she's probably living in a place of extreme hopelessness and despair. But listen, I've tried everything else. What can this hurt, right? I imagine somebody told a story. And I wish there was another book that outlined this person that impacted her and caused her to leave her house. And so one day, something was different. She got up. She decided to go check into this man named Jesus. The story goes on to tell that she pressed through the crowd of people all around Jesus that day, and she slipped through the masses of people, and she touched the edge of Jesus' robe. She didn't even get a hold of an arm. All she got was the coat. And yet, in just a moment, 12 years of 12 years of turmoil, 12 years of sickness, just disappeared. Because she acted on what she heard. We've heard that today already, right? You didn't even know I was preaching this message. It's pretty phenomenal. I love Holy Spirit. (laughs) In a moment, the bleeding stops, and Jesus turns and looks at her and says, Who touched me? And Peter scoffs, right, Peter? My my pastor calls him the apostle with the foot-shaped mouth. (laughs) Jesus, there's a crowd of people. Everyone's touching you. But something set her apart from the crowd. And Jesus turns to the woman and she falls before him trembling. And she retells what happened. There were two things that really stand out on this this story this morning. And I want to share those with you. But the first thing is that this woman, she acted on what she heard. She wasn't just a hearer of the word, as James talks about, but she was a doer also. Somebody told her a story. And listen, this morning, let's let's be honest, you have heard lots of stories. You've heard some encouragement. And you're going to have an opportunity today to act on what you've heard. 
That's going to be your choice. The story's been presented, but will you act on what you hear? So many of us hear the word week in and week out. We participate in the crowd of Christianity, but yet we never act. We spend lots of times around Jesus, but the difference here is that people act on what they hear. This woman decided to step out in faith as she pursued Jesus. And because she pursued Jesus, she got well that day. Many others were in the crowd. But yet Jesus only turned and acknowledged one person that day. Now the beauty of this crowd today is that Jesus wants to touch more than just one of you. Everybody can get a touch from Jesus today. Every single person in this room will we act on what we hear. The second thing, and this is my favorite part, is that this woman broke all kinds of religious rules to get her miracle. She just completely threw all the pharisaical doctrine, all the old Levitical laws, she threw them out in a moment. Pastor, that's blasphemy. Just indulge me for a second, please. I'm not telling you to throw the Bible out. But what we know is that she had an issue of blood. And the ceremonial law at that time was that anyone who would come into contact with this lady would be considered unclean. So not only did she live her life with an issue, she also lived her life in obscurity as a result of her issue because the religious law required her to not be able to go through anything, to go near anybody. Now that's a whole message in itself about how our issues oftentimes push us to obscurity. But she decided to step out of her obscurity and put the law aside for a moment. And she said, I'm going to pursue him no matter what. I don't care about the rules. I love 2 Chronicles 16.9. It says that the eyes of the Lord are running to and from across the earth, seeking a heart that's blameless toward his. I believe that day God was looking for a rule breaker. God was looking for somebody who was going to throw all the limitations off, I was going to throw all the religious law, all the ceremony apart and just say, you know what, I'm going after the heart of Jesus. I think Jesus was waiting for somebody to touch him that day. I believe right now God's searching back and forth across Winchester, Virginia. I think he's in the heavens right now, just cruising back and forth. Who's going to touch me? Who's going to lay everything to the side that they know, everything in them that says, you know what, this isn't my day, everything in them that says, you know what, God can't work in me here, all of that religious ceremony and rules that we put on ourselves, and God's saying, who's going to reach out and get my attention? The eyes of God are searching. She could have given up. She could have continued to do what she had always done and in return get the same results. But she decided that she was going to step out of her comfort zone that morning, or that day. I don't know what time of the day it was. I say morning because it's morning now. And get the attention of Jesus. Again, will you touch Jesus? Will the story of your life be written differently today? You've got a past, but today's an opportunity to turn the page and begin to write a new chapter. Everything else that you've been through, it's going to provide context for the future chapters of your life that are to be written. The question today is, will you reach out and will you touch him? Let me tell you, he's here. He's here. He's waiting. And there's a crowd of people in this room. And at any given moment, any one of us can press through all of that and touch the heart of Jesus and be changed in an instant. Will you touch him? At this moment, I'm going to turn it over to your pastor. Uh, Justin nailed it. Um, the, the song that they're going to sing here at the end is called He's a Good, Good Father. And uh, Justin started talking about stories 
there, and this is the first line. I'm not going to sing it. I'm going to let them do that part. But it says, yeah. <laughs> Keith? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, it says, this is what it says. This just blows my mind what the Holy Spirit does. This is the first line. It says, oh, I've heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like. Whew. But I've heard the tender whisper of love in the dead of night. And uh, it's beyond the story. The story is the reality of, of um, he changed me. And I, I kind of had, I don't want to say that I wasn't a mess before, but I did kind of have the favor that I didn't go through the alcohol or the drug addiction or all that. But I know that he changed me. And some of you know, and I, I can go around and, and speak to some of you. I, I, you've told me who you are, and you told me who you were, and you told me what he's doing now, and, and he's a good, good father. And, and if you're out there today, and, and you're that person that maybe, maybe you've gone to church, the one young man said he grew up in church, so that does not ex exclude you. Matter of fact, you've probably hidden it even more because you've grown up in church. And here's the, here's the issue. He didn't get to this part, but it says when that woman touched the, uh, touched, he told the whole story. She told the whole story. She told him the whole story. She came clean. God, this is who I am. This is who I am. And then God said, you're loved. I love you anyway. And your faith has made you whole. So would you stand with me? This is not your typical worship song. It's an intimacy song. Now, I don't know how to say it other than that. This is, this is a conversation between you and the Father. And before I start with your heads bowed and your eyes closed, and we're going to pray here, but you just say, Pastor Andy, I need to be free. I need to be brand new. I need to start over. And I want to so badly just touch him. If I could touch him. He said, Pastor, that's me this morning. If that's you, and I know the lights are down, but if that's you, would you just look up at me or maybe wave your hand at me and say, that's me, I need him, I need him. Just wave at me. If that's you, amen. Amen. If you need to know who Jesus Christ is, this is what Scripture says. It says, tell him the whole story. If we confess our sins, he is, listen, this is the best part. He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins. And not only just do that, not just forgive us, he washes them away. He gives us brand new life. And that's the prayer. I'm not going to give you a magic quote or, or anything. I'm not going to lead you in some type of religious format of how to do that. It's not any of that because what it is, it's this intimacy. God, I need you. I'm, I want to touch you. Would you touch me this morning? If you prayed something like that this morning, would you just look back up at me and say, yeah, that's my prayer. That's my prayer. Amen. Amen. He'll do it. Miracles are coming. I'm going to ask you guys, if you don't mind, would you guys in the yellow and black shirts, would you guys, guys just stand here at the front? And, and uh, as this song uh, starts to pl uh, play, if, if one of them was on your heart, maybe while you were watching, or maybe all of them, would, would, you, would you come and, and, and just grab one of them and say, you know what, I'm praying for you. I'm going to offer my prayer. I'm going to offer support. Even if you can't support them financially, maybe at the moment, Right now, at this moment, would you just say, you know what, I'm going to pray for some of these guys. And you can come ahead now if you want. Some of you, their families are here. If you guys want to come stand with them and pray with them. And then would you sing this song, not for anyone around you, not for me, not for the people that are up here, but would you sing this song? Look at, the, look at these words and sing them to God the Father because he is a good, good father. in stories of what they think you're like but I've heard the tender whisper of love in the dead of night and you tell me that you're pleased and that I'm never alone. 
you guys to stick around there is tons of food out there unless you get behind me in line so be better be, better be fast on that uh, we're going to feed these guys get get a chance to meet somebody new make sure if you didn't get a chance to pray for them you do that and then after we eat there's going to be a meeting right here in the sanctuary where we're going to discuss and put together a plan on how we kick the devil's behind as he fights us with these addictions and things so meet us back in here after that amen appreciate you guys there'll be a love offering out here Yes, let's give them a hand. There'll be, there'll, be a, there'll be a table out here with all of their stuff. Spend your money on them and, and help them. Uh, each dollar that you give will change a life. That's the, that's the power in this. Your money will go directly into helping save somebody's life. So uh, join us out here to eat. Let's pray real quick for the food, and we'll go out here. Heavenly Father, God, thank you so much for your love. I uh, thank you for Teen Challenge and how you change lives and make people brand new.
Thank you for today. Bless this food. We love you. We thank you. You are an awesome, awesome God. Amen.